Ciao a tutti e benvenuti di nuovo nel mio bagno, non è il mio bagno, è, un, è uno sfondo scaricato, magari avessi una casa così. Oggi è un'altra intervista che sarà in inglese, quindi cliccate la rotellina in basso per avere i sottotitoli in italiano o in portoghese o anche in spagnolo o in inglese, considerato che il nostro ospite oggi è Tiago, che è il proprietario di Westman Shaving, ok, del quale ho un sapone, uno solo. Hi, Tiago, how are you? Hi, Pasquale. Um, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me here. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Oh, it's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, so let's start. I would like to know, who, who are you? How did you start your, your journey here? Uh, well, it all started with wet shaving. Just uh, I discovered wet shaving uh, because I have really, really bad skin. A lot of ingrown hairs and acne, even at a later age. And so I, I started uh, first in a barber uh, with a chaffet or, or a straight razor. I started seeing that my skin improved a lot. And then I tried to find a way to do it at home. So that's how I discovered. I started with a search on Google, like, what's the best shaving brush? Something like that, just like anyone else. And so it started like that about three, four years ago. And um, I really took an interest in soaps, in soaps and aftershaves. Some people collect razors, some people collect brushes. I am really about the software and what are the properties, what's the best leather, best leather techniques. And just, just like that, I, I started to try and figure out how to do it. And here I am. <laughs> Okay, so I guess Westman shaving just because you are in Portugal, which is the Western European country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. You, you got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, which it's, it's, I mean, it makes sense. So yeah. uh, nice just one question, because you mentioned that you started with the Chavette, of course, and then straight razors. Are straight razors allowed in a barbershop in Portugal? Yes, they are. They still are. So uh, I think I will have to come to Portugal and, and get a shave there. <laughs> yeah, if you go to like, well, let me know. <laughs> you need to go to like really old places, not the new wave barber shops. You need mm -hmm. to go to the um, classical ones and yeah, you can get a straight razor shave. Okay, so you are in Lisbon, right? Yes, yes, I am. So Ryanair flies there. Uh, I, I will give you a call. <laughs> okay that will be nice <laughs> yeah so uh tell me about your soaps because you say that you got this passion about soaps and started to figure out how to do it so how was it when you started and how did you get to the final product that was a long journey so basically it was my wife's idea she wanted to do like a bath bomb and bath soap uh, business So she talked about it and I was like, well, you know what? I've been thinking about doing shaving soaps. So let's start researching it. Um, I started with like basic tutorials on YouTube, tried to make very simple formulas. And then I tried to figure out like what's best for specific for the leather to shave, not just any leather, but shaving leather. And yeah, tried try to do some research, then start practicing. I did, I, I don't know, dozens and dozens of patches. I would add like one, two ingredients at a time, then change the ratios. And yeah, it took me about, not a year, but almost a year to perfect the, the sh just the shaving soap. So, so that's how it came about. You started with the, uh, I believe, vegan soap. soap. Yeah, and then, and, then, and then you went to tallow. If I'm not wrong, you are, you are tallow, right? Yeah, yeah. My formula is tallow. Tallow was yeah, one of the beef tallow, yeah. I, I used. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, yeah, uh, not, not for any particular reason. It's not like I don't like a vegan soap. I will never do a vegan soap. It's not like that. Uh, there are good uh, vegan soaps. Um, but I, I just really like tallow as an ingredient. It plays its part in the formula, just like any vegetable butter. If you look at the ingredient list of my soaps, There are a lot more vegetable butters than, than there is tallow, of course. So it's just a component. Maybe one day I'll do a vegan one. But yeah, for now, it's uh, an animal product. So it has tallow, it has lanolin as well, and it has goat's milk uh, too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 
Okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, now, uh, you know, I'm getting old. I am 43 already, so I need my glasses to, to read here. But uh, yeah, I will, I will comment the, the formula uh, whenever, whenever I will try the soaps, the soap, which will be basically tomorrow. So tomorrow I will do a video with the soap that will come out right after your interview. So, uh, yeah. So tell me, about, tell me about the sense of your soap, because uh, I saw that you have only four, which is interesting, because there are two tendencies, in my opinion, at the moment, which are uh, the same base, the same soap, and 200 different, different scents. And then there are people that concentrate on four or five very good scents. So how did you get there? Yeah, I started, I started with four, uh, as you said, and then I launched a fifth. So there's five now available. Okay. Um, and I'm working on more, but yeah, I really like to take the time and do the scents like carefully and test them over a period of time, wear them as perfume. That's basically how I figure out if they are to my liking. Then I adjust and, and continue going from there. But yeah, I don't have a huge catalog. The brand is basically, uh, it's very new, started this early this year. So yeah, I have five now and I want to keep things like that. I will not be launching like 100 soaps every time. I'm planning two new scents uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, I'm actually doing um, a limited edition for a Facebook group now, which is a six cent, but that's, that's exclusive to them. But yeah, um, I will not like launch five cents at a time mm -hmm. and not really like how I, how I feel about it. I like to do the sense my way and just perfect them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I, I smelled it, uh, is used is not mine. Uh, one of my follower, uh, allowed me to have it for, for a test and this scent utopia is fantastic is really is really actually what i like which is good and old and you know this this wintry kind of sense but then i saw that you have uh, also ambassador ribalta and alma and yeah uh, adama store sorry adama store ribalta and alma which basically uh, cover all the variety of scents with the Adama store, which is more like uh, uh, salty, uh, so something like that. Can you can you tell us something about it? Yeah, so Adama store was the first idea <laughs> because, you know, we in Portugal, we have like an idea that we are a country of the sea. So basically the first thing I, I need to do is an oceanic scent, an aquatic scent, and that's how the idea of Adama store uh, came about. It was not the first one I finished out of the four, but was the first one I started. Um, and yeah, notes are basically sea salt and then some earthy notes in fatty ver, um, and some green notes as well, like cut grass and a bit of melon and rhubarb. So yeah, it's green, hearty, and especially salty, yeah, aquatic. Mm -hmm. that's, and what, that's a, what about the others? The others then you have... Um, then you have the second idea was Ribalta, which is a citrus, but it's not just like a light citrus, citrus only. It has a bit of a heavier base mm -hmm. with woods, a bit of sandalwood, um, a bit of cedar, has some spices. So it's not just citric, but the main idea is a citric soap. The citrus notes, by the way, are lime. Uh, bergamot and neroli, if I'm not mistaken. So we can we can call it uh, a more of a classic. A spicy citric soap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You which is interesting that. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And then there was the idea for Alma, which is more of a sweet and floral. Um, I didn't want it to be too feminine with notes of passion fruit and rose. So. It has uh, also a heavier base of musk, a musky notes, kind of mm -hmm. like a barbershop uh, base. Um, and then with a lot of florals and sweetness over it. So yeah, that's Alma. Mm -hmm. 
Then Utopia, as you said, it's a more, it's the only one that's more uh, darker and woody. Um, most people will say it's a better scent for the winter. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the idea for Utopia um, came as I always liked the soaps that are uh, dupes of Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille, mm -hmm. but I find them too sweet and I find them too sickening after a period of time. So I thought, how can I, not trying to do better than the original fragrance, of course, but in a shaving soap, how can I do that? But not as sweet, more woody, more spicy, and definitely cut off some, some of the sweetness from it. So that was the idea for, for Utopia. My note is tobacco, um, then it's benzoin, wood, cedar. Yeah, the heavier of the, of the four initial ones. And then after that original launch, I launched the fifth scent, which is called uh, Jerez. Mm -hmm. Okay. An homage to an area in the north of Portugal. And it's, um, it's a fougère. Uh, with main notes of bergamot, lavender, and oak moss. Mm. It's being very well received at the moment. Um, I will not launch any more scents for the summer. I think Ribalta, the Master, Alma, and this one cover um, summer scents well for the first year. Um, and now I'm working more towards um, darker scents for the winter and for autumn. Okay. So well, I, I am. I am the kind of darker scent guy uh, <laughs> and I have to tell you I, I didn't tell you before because I wanted to be I didn't want to be disrespectful but uh, there is a Greek producer which emulates Tom Ford tobacco vanille and I have to tell you that the two scents are very similar but not the same so it's something that impressed me and I was going to ask you if if uh, it was inspired to Tobacco Vanille of Tom Ford, and you just said it. So, it's... yeah, it, it is, but it's not. It's no, not. It's not the same. same. It's not the it, same. It's not the same. But yeah, the, the, the idea is basically what I what I said. It's um, inspired by that perfume because I love it. But in soap form, the the pre blends that are used for soap are just not like my my thing. They are very 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 sweet. Too sweet. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to cut that off a bit and make it more woody. But yeah, I, I had Tom Ford tobacco vanilla, vanilla in mind. No, yeah, no that, doubt. That was, that was just a, <laughs> a scratch to start from. Yeah, yeah. I understand. I understand. And uh, well, uh, your, your soaps, uh, I, I will tell you to everybody that, I will tell to everybody that are sold in Italy by epogabarberia.it, which is your distributor. But I saw on your website that you also sell in other countries in Europe. So maybe we have followers from somewhere else that want to know in which country your soaps are available. Might be very interesting. Yeah, uh, sure, of course. So in Spain, you have two, um, two distributors, which is Gifts and Care and Cuchilleria Moreno. Mm -hmm. um, you have one in, in Germany, which is uh, Soul Objects. Mm -hmm. Then Epca Barbieria in Italy, as you as you said, um, and then in the United States you have Pasteur Shaving, and you also have the Razor Company. Um, both carry. Oh, so you soap. went. So you went over overseas too. Yes, yes, they carry them in in the United States. That's just the soaps business. for now, but yeah, yeah. You say just the soap, and you made me think about your aftershaves. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Right. You have aftershaves too, and I smelt it, and uh, is not the exact same scent as, as the as the soap. This is more interesting, in my opinion. It has that, like I I, I don't understand if it is uh, cinnamon or. Uh, star anise inside something like that that is spicy maybe you don't want to tell but is more yes. spicy is more is more is more interesting as this is more a flat oh. a flat scent which is perfect but this gives something more in my opinion um i can tell you they are made with the exact same fragrance from the same bottle 
Okay. Oh, all really? Of the same. Yes. What happens is, uh, I've heard this before from other artisans, and I never really understood it until I made the product. Soap is not really a good carrier for scent, right? It's funny it? because we artisans, it's one of the, our bigger selling points. It's the scent. Um, but an aftershave or a cologne give much more depth to the scent. You notice uh, more notes, like smaller undertones that you cannot figure out in, in soap. You cannot sense them in soap. Right, so that, that's just what it is because I, I guarantee you they are made with exactly the same fragrance from the same pot. That's Everything. very interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, so well, uh, you told that you told us that you are a wet shaver yourself, uh, which yeah. is interesting because it happens sometimes that you have some soap maker that are not a wet shaver. So they do, they do what they do just because, just because they have a business model in their head. But you, as a user, too, you have, you have a business model, of course, but also an idea of what it has to be. So uh, do you have a soap that inspired you uh, in starting and in reaching your, your soap qualities? I have... I have a lot of favorites, uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, there's people doing really uh, good work um, basically everywhere. You have quite a few good soap makers, artisanal soap makers in Europe. And of course, in America, it started way earlier, I, I believe, at least the artisanal part, not yeah. the traditional yeah, yeah. soap, uh, of course. But um, yeah, I have quite a few favorites. I believe every brand or every formula has its highs and lows. Not a, I don't see a perfect one, but mm -hmm. there are some great, great soaps out there. Um, definitely. So there's great, great offering in the, in the market right now. Very political you answer. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want me to name one? Um, a soap maker that I've always appreciated it's and when i say this it's not just the soap formula is good okay it's mm -hmm. how they communicate in social media it's mm -hmm. how um how they design the labels how are the scents um it's barrister and man barrister okay. and man mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. okay i never tried one i will for sure <laughs> <laughs> so and what are your favorite tools like razors blades and then you know um, brushes i love variety uh as for brushes i i prefer badger uh, especially mm -hmm. two band badgers mm -hmm. with not too much treatment uh and low loft some backbone uh, of course i have a lot of smoke brushes um for <laughs> for yeah. um, country uh, reasons um but yeah i prefer badgers as for razors it kind of evolves and changes over time uh mm -hmm. and then i enjoy a razor for some some time i leave it uh, to the side then a few months later i pick it up again i have great shaves with it then i switch to another um, right now i'm enjoying when i have two three days of growth a blackland uh, blackbird and mm -hmm. when I'm shaving daily, I, I'm using the Game Changer uh, 84. By Razor Rock. By Razor Rock, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the two. Then sometimes I get a shave with a Tatara as well. Um, Great Razor Tatara. If I have to pick like a razor for life, I only need one. It would be, it would be the Mercur Progress. The Mercur uh, Progress. It's, yeah. yeah, nice choice. Nice choice. <laughs> Uh, but a lot of different phrases, yeah. Yeah. So you gave us a lot of interesting information. Uh, now I would like to leave you the leave the floor to you, so you can tell us what are your way ahead, or if you have ideas for the future, or if you're planning to expand or whatever. I mean, we are here to listen to you, so. Okay, so um, as far as expanding goes, uh, I'm really happy with what happened until now. Um, I don't have any like magical plans to expand globally and be the, mm -hmm. a huge brand. I'm announcing um, a new retailer soon. Um, the order just shipped out this morning, so they should receive it next week. 
um, I will announce it. It's it's in Europe, um, which is nice. More more product available for the users. Um, then I'm working, as I said, on two cents uh, for autumn, which should come out with um, an aftershave emulsion without alcohol, like a fluid. Oh. Uh, like uh, uh, amamelis that are, that are coming. Sorry? Like amamelis? amamelis? Yeah, it's actually the first ingredient. So yeah, it's an yeah. emulsion of, of witch hazel and a few fats. Um, I have a bottle here, which mm -hmm. is for the, the special edition. They are getting it first. But I'll just show you the texture. I shouldn't change much until it's released. So, yeah. It's something it's like this. It's creamy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a balm. Yeah. Like a balm, very fluid balm. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's coming later this year, along with hopefully two cents. One for sure. I'm not sure about the second yet, but um, should be ready. Um, yeah. And those are, those are the plans. Okay. Okay. So Tiago, is uh, any there is anything else you want to tell us, or just uh, I will let you go and tell you that it's been a pleasure have you having you here. Uh, I really hope that you will uh, have success with your with your product and you know grow because. And I'm not talking about growing as a as a company. I'm talking about growing as a soap maker, which is more complex, and because. The community of wet shavers always wants, is always eager to have new soaps, new, new scents, new stuff to test. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, and that's that's what I what I want to do is basically evolve, keep uh, keep getting better at, um, and hopefully release new products, uh, new formulas, and new scents. Those are those are those are the plans. It has been a pleasure for me. Thank you for having me here, for the opportunity to talk about the brand and about myself. Well, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Tiago. Bye-bye. Have a nice one.